All right, <clears throat> so to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the template just to see that things are working the way they're supposed to. So this was the template that was created on the CNC, right? There's a top and then there's a bottom. And we're gonna cover that in a second. And then, so some of the other things that we're gonna to need to do that, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take basically a sample board. It's basically a perfect four inch by two inch. And that's a really common dimension that I'm gonna be using on that project. We're gonna test the uh, five hole on one end. Uh, and then we're gonna go on the other end and we're gonna use the same template, but we're gonna router that end to make a tenon. And then we're going to use a bunch of these slots to make, to router uh, mortises. We're going to router a mortise going this way on a four inch. And then we're going to router a mortise going that way. And if we're going to router a mortise on going on that direction on a two inch, you need, of course, the template. And again, there's a top to that and there's a bottom. And then we're going to need a couple of, of these. These are inch and a quarter by two. And those are going to go, when we you do the end grain stuff, they're going to go in that slot and that slot. I can put them in there now. I don't know if they're going to stay in there, but basically that's where they're going to go. And that's that. those are the guides, right? Then we're going to need a couple of these uh, larger ones. And two inch by three inch seems to work pretty well because what I can do is put those in the slots like this one. Let's, let's figure that we're going to start with a four inch, okay? So I'll put those in the four inch slots. Now the things that we're going to need are um a good you know, really actually i like the accurate measuring devices that's an incra right i'm going to need you know a ruler i don't like going on the big monster rulers on the smaller stuff i love using these six foot and the nine foot we we'll use a pencil uh, of course we're going to be doing some routering so we want some ear protection and then i like using hinge bits to do my dimpling really well but if you don't have one of those then we're going to use this punch and you can use a quarter inch punch and probably use some lubricant. And then I, of course, everything I do like this, I'm gonna use my dad's hammer, uh, God rest his soul, but he, uh, I'm gonna use that to do a little punching. And then I have a Milwaukee all set up to go with a plunge router uh, adapter to it, the, the plate on it. I just love this router and it's got a great uh, dust port on it. And then I'm, I'm just using the 18 volt Milwaukee. That could be any vac. The important thing is that you make sure that you get something that fits in there and stays in there while you're routering a lot. Okay, so one of the things that can really help uh, with the router, you can spray the actual template itself. The other thing, you're just gonna spray a little bit on that that allows the router to have even less friction. Again, there's not that much friction on the PVC as it is. And then by putting it on the side with the wood grain, you get less friction, but we're gonna have even now almost zero friction. I'm just gonna pick a spot on the on the two inch edge. This is where we're gonna test our, our two inch one. So I'm just gonna make a mark at 10 inch. So then we're gonna do the two inch edge first since I'm kind of set up for that. So I'm taking one of these two by threes, right? And again, the slot is, is about three and a quarter, including the radius at the end. So a three inch fits in there quite nicely. So let's put the workpiece in the vise where it belongs. So I'm just sticking that in there. So then again, right now, I'm just gonna lock down the, the vise. So you can see, I'm just sliding the template over the top. Catch this, but there's a pencil mark right there. This is one of the peeps, right? So I'm gonna put the peep over the top of that. And then if I look down that hole, there's, yeah, actually you can see it down in there somewhere, right? So I'm good to go. So my, my thing is already in position right now. So what I did is I put a clamp underneath and that's gonna hold the router, the template into position. Okay, again, I'm gonna cover this in a lot more detail on some of the projects and when we do them, but this is a Milwaukee router. It's got a plunge base, dust collection a port right there. It has a quarter inch upcut spiral mounted on it along with a guide bushing. So that guide bushing is gonna sit right in that little slot. And then when I do this, go around, boy, does that thing slide nicely with that spray on there. 
Okay, so this router, like most, has some sort of uh, depth gauge on there. It allows it to come down and, and actually you know, control the depth of each pass on it. So I'm going to set it at the very, very top one so that when that router comes down and I'm going to be routing, it's going to be noisy. So I'll have the camera set as close as I can to that. But basically, it's going to come down on top of that one. Then after I do that pass, it's, I'm going to turn it. And it's going to go to that one. Um, and this one, if I want to go down three eighths of an inch, then I'll go down to the uh, third one. So let's just see how this all goes. The vacuum first. Now the router. So I've done my first pass, I'm going to come up, change that, drop it down again, and do, this, and do the second pass. Again, because I want to go 3 8 inch deep on this one, I'm going to let it come up just a little bit, and turn it to the next location. Okay, so drum roll. I haven't seen what's inside there. You're seeing it for the first time, just like me. So, let's just look at what's in there. So now, what's not in there is dust. There's not a single speck of dust. That's because of that cavity inside of there. So the other day I cut up like a test and then I planed it and everything. So basically what I have is a perfect uh, three-quarter wide board, which would be the same as you'd buy off the shelf. And then I had ripped it to two and three-quarter. So it's a perfect two and three-quarter. And then what I did is I ran a router with a um, eighth inch, I believe, uh, round over bit along the surface of that. And what that did is then that created the shape that we want to use that's going to match the mortise. Because again, so does that fit? And yes, it does. It fits like a glove. So, but I, what I was looking for is to make sure that I basically had a perfect three quarter by a perfect two and three quarter, which I do. I added a little bit to the link. So now we're good to go on. We know that the size for that, using the combination of that, more that template area with this bit and with that bushing, everything's gonna work. Now I need to put those two in the uh, slots for the four inch. So I've got that. Okay, and again, it's a perfect fit. And then I can slide that anywhere I want. And then now I'll have this wider peep. So if I put a pencil mark in there somewhere, I'm always losing my pencils, right? Uh, but if I put a pencil mark there, then I can slide that peep right over the top of that. And then that'll be lined up exactly with the center there. I could use this one as well. So, um, that's it. I know that she fits the four inch. Now what, what do I need to do next? Let's find out. All right, so again, I go to the micro vise, the vise that's on the micro vise, right? And I'm gonna snug that guy up. Uh, I'm gonna probably go down just a little bit with that. A little easier to control. And even though it's four inch wide and that's like eight or nine inches, it still works just, just fine. So when I'm going to router the ends to make a tenon, uh, again, I, a lot of times I mount a tenon. That's a totally different thing. A lot of times, most of the time, I'm just going to mount one of my uh, fabricated tenons. These are made of steel. They're quarter inch thick. They're, the hole is threaded in the middle. Um, there actually is a U.S. patent that I, I have a U.S. patent on those. 
Um, if you're interested, get in contact with me. I can fill you in on how that would work. But so, but if we want to make a tenon, then what we're going to do is I want to use the template to do that with, or at least to get most of it done. So that's where I'm going to, I do need to make a mark on that. Uh, I have a guide on the two sides that, that are going to control the, the, the width of it. So those are the one and a quarter inch ones that I stick in there. Okay. Now when I turn that upside down, the thing I need to do is I need to turn this so that the peak hole, the pencil peak, is right there. Now if I look down into that slot, you can see the pencil mark down in there. Again, that router bit is going to follow all of this, and including going way outside. That's why I didn't need a dust port on that, because there's so much open area that any dust that is in there is actually just going to go out on the floor. Again, most of it's going to get sucked by the shop, shop vac anyhow. That there's actually a little bit of movement. I'm just discovering that because these are one of the first times I'm doing it. I'm just being honest with you. That's also why I use my threaded tenons because they just solve a lot of these problems. But this, the solution for that is the, where it's, the reason it's loose, it's not loose because of the clamp. It's loose because these are fit in there loose. So what I would end up doing, the long-term solution for that would be to adhese those guides in there then they're not going to move. So it'd be a PVC type of adhesion material. But so in the meantime, I am safe using this in the center hole. It's already there and it's not going to hurt anything. So that's a, that's a, uh, a fit like a trim bit, a GRK. But by sending it down deep, it cleared the surface and therefore I can router and it's not going to hit again. These all these things that you need to solve if you're going to do these this way. This is this method of making tenons on the end of a board is a lesser of a lot of evils. The evils being cost and and everything else. So, um, but at least I'm giving it a, a, a the good old power try. try. Okay, that was the first setting. Now I'm going to look through here, turn it, and get back down. The first one made about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to get a quarter of it. So now my second pass. All right, again, drum roll, let's just see. So before I remove the template, I want to look and make sure I got everything, and I did. So I've, I've gotten this whole half, this whole half, and as goofy as it looks, you'll see how this kind of comes together. All right, so again, this is not a woodworking lesson, but this is a, a, a sliding compound miter saw. I've but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, hopefully remove, that template. Let's see how close we were. 